uh, 460, Engineering and Economy, we'll be talking about depreciation. Hello everyone, let me first introduce our team, team number three. Uh, we have Daniel, Eduardo, and Don Bing, and I'm Taufik. Uh, today we're going to talk about depreciation. Uh, so uh, we have a, we want to explain to you what is exactly depreciation and what are the available definition for, for this term. And then we're going to talk about different methods of how to calculate uh, uh, depreciation. And uh, we'll give a, we try to, to, to come up with a single example and try to use different methods so you can compare like the methodologies and differences between the, 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 the method to calculate the depreciation. And then we'll talk about how depreciation is accounted and how, how do they, they're accounted and taken into consideration when calculating and uh, accounting taxes. So, the ANSI, uh, the American National uh, Standard Standardization Institute, gave a couple of definitions, but the, the, they de define it as a, the, de the decline in the, in the value of the capitalized assets. So, the value of, uh, uh, of a machine or a, of equipment or whatever assets do you have, it, it kind of, the value of it, it kind of declines with, with time, as you can see. But there is a, either either due to, a, either also due to a, a loss of value due to physic, physical or economic reasons like the use uh, of the machine or equipment, for example. And here we have a, a, an example for things that cannot uh, depreciate. Sorry, you cannot claim depreciation on your wife. And uh, of course, it, it keeps declining uh, with time, except that it cannot go below the salvage value. And we will explain to you in the examples how this happens. And why, why, why we, we talk about depreciation? Why is it important? It's important because it is, it is, uh, it is important in calculating tax. It's, it's uh, they deal with it as, as if it is an expense. It's a depreciation actually is called a non-cash expense. And here, as I said at the beginning, we're, we're gonna represent an example. And we're gonna talk about different methods of calculating the, the, the depreciation, but here we wanna use only one example that is on, on campus, in a, any research group, that you will need some time a, a machine or an equipment. Here we have a, a scanning electron uh, microscope, for example, and uh, we want to uh, find out, like the feasibility study, or we want to know how much you'll, uh, whether you will buy one or how how long you want to keep it. So you want to know this, the how does the the value of this equipment or machine, and here is the, the microscope. Depreciate. I'll give the chance to Eduardo to represent, talk more about uh, the first uh, method. Well, actually, I'd like to jump in. Uh, so the whole point of this is you're in engineering economy. You want to use this as a tangible thing, so you're part of a research group here. Your research group orders this machine at the cost of $150,000 in January, and it has a usable life of five years and a salvage value of $30,000. So we're going to use those numbers and the different methods of calculating depreciation to show how that actually breaks down and how much it depreciates each year based on what, what method. And I'll let yeah. Eduardo talk. We'll be, the first um, set of methods that we'll be discussing are the classical methods. And they are the straight line method, the declining the declining balance method and the sum of the year's digits method. They're called the classical methods because they were used with the tax code if um, the, the equipment was placed into service before 1981. Now, the straight line depreciation method is the simplest and the most often used method to compute depreciation. It's very simple. The depreciation is given by the equation on, on the slide. 
Um, you first, first of all, you take the initial cost of, of your equipment, you subtract the salvage value, and then you divide by the number of years that you expect for it to be in service. And it gives you an even distribution of depreciation for during the entire during the entire service life service life of your equipment. For example, in our example, um, we said, well, our equipment costs one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and it has a salvage value of thirty thousand dollars, and a service life of five years. Now, to calculate the depreciation per year, you simply subtract thirty thousand dollars from one hundred fifty thousand and divide by five. But uh, continuing off where you left off, yeah, if you divide by five, you end up with twenty-four thousand dollars per year. Now, at the bottom, you can see the book value or how much your asset is worth at the end of each and every year. Now, we can see that at the end of the first year, your asset is only worth now one hundred twenty-six thousand. And if you keep reading all the way down to the end of the service life, you'll actually find that. Your asset is worth its salvage value in your asset at the end of the service life. Okay, uh, now we'll jump into a uh, different method for accounting for depreciation. Now this is a more realistic method because it's an accelerated method uh, accounting for depreciation, meaning that most of the value of the asset is lost with its first initial use or first initial years. Let's, uh, you drive a car off the lot, immediately the price goes down. This is somewhat like that in the sense is the earliest years have the most <coughs> depreciation in its value. Uh, the client balance method is uh, shown right here. You have this depreciation rate A, and you multiply that by the book value of the year before to find how much it depreciates. And you use that new depreciation value to calculate the new book value, and then continue going on calculating depreciation, book value, depreciation, book value until there's no more. Now, uh, we changed the uh, previous example just a little bit to make it a little bit more complicated. We said for this problem now that you buy the machine in April, so you don't have the full first year of it depreciating, you only have it depreciating three-fourths of the year. And you also have it depreciating at 200% the declining balance method. And we'll go through how to work this problem out. So like I said, I explained it here. Here's the uh, depreciation rate. Since it's 200% the normal rate, you have the 200% divided by the useful life here, which is five years, giving you an overall depreciation of 0.4. Now, we use this 0.4, like I explained earlier, and you only have it for the first three-fourths of depreciation. So that's shown in this first depreciation value. This is the how much depreciates. And your first initial book value is shown here, where you take the initial cost of the asset, and then subtract the depreciation, and continuing so on and so forth, you can see though it worked out all the way to here. However, when we reach that, this value, book value of like 22,680, that's technically less than the salvage value. So what happens here? Any guesses? Uh, this actually can't happen, and I'll show you in the next slide. The actual depreciation in year four would only be $7,800, because that would take the depreciation of the asset back to its original salvage value. And so technically, during the fifth year, you would have no depreciation of the asset. It just pans off on a straight line, as long as, like, um, however many years you have the machine before that time, it can't depreciate less than the salvage value. So that's what it worked like. So you have the, the book value explains the equal to salvage value after n periods or whatever. You can't go less than the salvage value. Just reinforcing that fact. And we have a uh, funny comic here saying that Sarah Palin's book cannot depreciate more than it already has. So just going in that theme. Uh, next slide. Another method of uh, accounting for like an accelerated uh, method of depreciation is the sum of years digits method. And it's similar to like by how much it depreciates in the initial years. It's based off of the asset losing much of its value in the first 
first years of use, just like the uh, declining balance method, but it's you, it's <coughs> formed a little bit differently. You use the sum of years digits, which is the SYD, which is shown here, and that's just you're essentially summing the entire years that, of the useful life together. And uh, a simple shortcut is you take the useful life, multiply by the useful life plus one divided by two. And we'll actually show you how that's worked out very shortly. But as you can see, the depreciation in year J is given by this formula, where you have very similar uh, notation to the previous problems that were shown. You have the book value minus the salvage value, but the percentage of depreciation lost is based off of the useful, the fraction created by the useful life and the sum of years digits. Uh, next slide, please. Again, we just went to the normal standard problem of our scanning electron microscopes being bought at $150,000. And we have the same salvage value of $30,000 and the useful life of five years. Now, just showing you how to calculate the sum of years digits method, you just have five, five plus one, five, that's 15. Now, as you can see, as the depreciation is calculated, you have that fraction before you have the, the actual calculation of what it seems like the book value of that section would be. So you have this fraction multiplies the initial cost minus the uh, salvage value, and you get the uh, individual depreciation each year. Now, it's not, it's depreciating by like the same factor, but it's not evenly spread out through the entire useful life like the um, straight line method of depreciation. So this again accounts for the accelerated depreciation of most objects or assets in life. And I'll turn over to the All right. Okay, besides all these three kinds of uh, uh, classical method for uh, calculating the depreciation, there are other kinds of uh, method. The first one is the thinking form method. Uh, we can clearly see that uh, in the previous discussion by uh, Daniel, the uh, balance, uh, the balancing declining method and and the uh, SVD method, they all have a very common uh, phenomenon is that the depreciation happening in the early year is relatively larger than the ones happening in the later years of the uh, entire service life. But here, the thinking form uh, is is a totally opposite thing. That the depreciation happening in the early time is less than that happen later. This method is, is established by assuming uh, imaginary deposit with a pre predetermined interest rate of IR, IS. And uh, we assume the total amount of this deposit is equals to your initial cost minus the salvage title which means we just imagine all of these depreciation, the total amount of depreciation happened as a uh, uniform deposition during the service years. So we can come with this equation to calculate the depreciation for a uh, certain year. It's just like uh, the depreciation equals to the sinking form, with, which is uh, little d times uh, one plus the uh, interest rate. And D is calculated as this, just like we know the total amount as the uh, uniform deposition, and then we know the years, we know the uh, interest rate, so that we can use this formula to calculate D. So it's just like you can tell yourself, I'm not losing the value of the machine, I'm just uh, depositing it into a progress banking account as a donation. Here we give a uh, same uh, uh, example of the of how to calculate the depreciation with the thinking form method. Uh, these values are the same as previously discussed, and we just imagine that the predetermined interest rate is ten percent per year. So first of all, we can calculate the thinking form. A uh, little d is as shown as, as here. So it comes up with uh, nineteen thousand six hundred fifty, and then. Based on the equation, we can calculate the depreciation by, which I'm sorry, this is three, four, and five. I'm sorry, it's a tab. Uh, we can calculate the depreciation in each particular year. As we can see, the depreciation increases with year goes by. So it's a totally opposite situation when we considering the uh, interesting rate. 
And another uh, method is called the unit of production method. In this method, another very important factor is considered is just like the total output of the uh, through the whole service years. For example, if you if we are using machine, the machine has its own output. For example, if we use a SEM for research, we take scans. So the total amount of the scans we take with the machine, in other words, the you the total usage of this machine should be considered. So in this formula, we can see the depreciation is defined by the proportion to the number of units produced in that period. That means the more scan you take with this machine, the more value I will lose. Okay. This is the same uh, example. See here, we just uh, gave, up, uh, gave out these, imagine this uh, total number of scans taken each year. And uh, we know the portions of, these, uh, of the scans taken each year with the total amount. So we can calculate the depreciation by, uh, by the formulas we showed. Uh, in this uh, example, the very important thing is the scans or the output taken by each year should be known so that we can use this uh, method. Besides all these uh, classic, three classical methods and the two methods I have introduced, there are other methods for, dep for calculating depreciation since the tax code in the government is changing all the time. So after uh, 1981, these two methods are introduced for calculating the depreciation. Which one is called the ACRS and one is called the IMACRS, which is simply for the modified ACRS. And uh, these two, in these two uh, methods, since the test code is becoming more complicated, so it's impossible for us to use such, as a, such a, a simple formula to simply calculate the depreciation happening each year. So the rate of depreciation in both of these two methods is offered by the government based on different kinds of property lifetime and property type. So it's very simple. You have a property, you have, you know it's uh, service life. You just go to the table and find out what the uh, depreciation, depreciation rate you should have and calculate the depreciation. So from now on, no more calculation. All the things is given by law. Well, now that we've gone over, oh. now that we've gone over how to calculate how to put a, a, a dollar sign to depreciation, we can actually see how it is applied to a balance sheet. Um, suppose that USD makes $100,000 growth off the use of the scanning electron microscope. If we go back to our first example with the straight line depreciation, if you recall, um, the, the microscope depreciated by $24,000 um, every year. Now the important thing to note about depreciation as it is, it's that it's a tax deductible. Now what that means is that instead of being taxed at 35% from $100,000, we can deduct um, the depreciation as an expense and we'll only be taxed at $76,000. What that means is that the taxes at 35% are not $35,000, so in actuality they are $26,600. Now what that means is that your net income would turn out to be $73,400. All right, guys, uh, to sum up, uh, we uh, would notice that uh, depreciation is a, a money amount that, is, uh, that affects the, the taxes and taken out uh, from, the, from, the, uh, from the actual like the, the revenue. So to calculate the, the taxes, it's just taken out and then it's non-taxable. Right? It's considered as an expense, non-cash expense. And also the, we saw that uh, the depreciation, depreciation cannot go below the salvage value. Perfect. Thank you very much. Do you have uh, any questions? <laughs>